Our implementation plan reminds us that although individual rare diseases are uncommon together, they may affect up to 300,000 people across Scotland. We also need to balance immediate information and support needs at diagnosis with the medium to longer term needs, ensuring that as a person and family living with the rare disease face specific challenges, relevant information and support is available because, of course, conditions can change and evolve and care may need to change as well. Turning to medicines, which I know are an issue of interest to you all. We'll have seen significant changes in Scotland following the work done by the Health and Sport Committee, the Parliament and the Scottish Medicines Consortium. It's actually a very good example of Parliament working together. I know that Leslie, uh, one of the original petitioners on access to medicines, is here this evening. The stronger patient voice from people like Leslie is a key part of the changes made by the Scottish Medicines Consortium. We're supporting these changes through the new Medicines Fund. However, the price of some of these new drugs remains an issue and I want to take the opportunity to urge pharmaceutical companies to make their drugs available to the NHS at fair prices. We're still at the early stages of some of these changes and we'll continue to reflect on how they're working to deliver improvements for patients. I'll close by returning to the implementation plan. Over the coming year, our oversight group for the plan will collaborate with all of our partners in Scotland and with organisations like Rare Disease UK to develop patient-centred, safe, effective and sustainable services for people living with a rare disease. There's a lot happening, a lot still to happen, but it's been a pleasure to be able to join you this evening, share a bit of the, the work um, that's going on, a bit of my perspective. But I hope you find the evening informative and useful and enjoyable as well. Thank you very much.